Good morning and welcome to our service on this third Sunday of Advent. And today we light the third Advent candle, the pink one, the candle of joy. Eventually. Our joy is in God and in his son Jesus Christ. Like peace, joy is a gift from God. It overtakes us and fills us when we remember what God has done and what he has promised to do. So we light this candle today to remind us that Christ came and is coming so that all people might have a rich and abundant life. We thank God for the hope he gives us, for the peace he bestows and for the joy he pours into our hearts. Let us pray. God of joy, Emmanuel, send your light into our hearts at this time. Help us to be ready for the time of Christ appearing. Fix our hearts and our minds upon those things you have done and those you have promised to do, that we may have the joy you have promised. And as we worship you, strengthen us so that we may always do your will and so bless you and the world that you have made. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. In our gathering prayer, Eternal God and Father, we thirst for your love and we long for your presence. Come, Lord, and refresh us with the water of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and together we say our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our Lord and God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as a thanksgiving we say together the Gloria. Glory be to God in heaven. Peace on earth to all mankind. Father, heavenly King, creator, God of power undefined. Praise and honour, thanks we offer. Worship you with heart and mind. Jesus Christ, our Saviour, only Son of God by faith we know, Lamb of God, the world's Redeemer, love and mercy to us show. Seated at the Father's right hand, intercede for us below. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Jesus Christ, you are most high. With the Father and the Spirit, Trinity, to you we cry, Alleluia, Alleluia, you, O God, we glorify. <coughs> and our collect. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> now, Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Luke chapter 3 verses 7 to 18. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down <clears throat> and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? 
don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, well, what should we do? And he replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. And John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. <coughs> May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a number of talent shows on our TVs and some people who enter sadly have absolutely no talent at all. But occasionally someone with an amazing voice performs and those both judging and watching are stunned. And this person for most of their life has been nowhere in, in the performance circulation and perhaps only sang in the shower until the time was right. And in a way, John the Baptist was someone with a stunning voice too. He had also been out of circulation in the desert until the time was right. And we don't know what the trigger was that, that uh, brought John out of the desert, probably the Holy Spirit made that call. Here was a desert man dressed in uh, clothing made of camel hair and probably smelling a bit like a camel too. Food, as you're probably aware in the desert, is a bit limited. No shops to buy from, and so John lived off the land. And we're told that he lived on locusts and wild honey. And while many people in the world do indeed eat grasshoppers and locusts and even flies, there is also a tree called the honey locust, which grows in the area. Um, uh, and where he, where he got them from, I have no idea, but my grandfather used to bring them to me when he visited. And the pods, the pods are about a foot long and they, they looked a bit like um, brown dried out runner beans. And the flesh of the pods is really good to eat because of a, a secret that's hidden inside. They have a series of hollow chambers and these are filled with a sweet syrup. They are gorgeous. So while the insects, locusts and grasshoppers are probably very nutritious, some scholars believe that John may have eaten locust beans. They're, they're also a lot easier to catch. Uh, over 700 years earlier, the prophet Isaiah had spoken of someone who would raise their voice in the desert in preparation for the coming of the Lord. And the prophecy which speaks of one calling the, in the desert begins, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for. So John's message wasn't, as we may think, one of anger, but one of love, the love of a, fa a father for his children. They've been punished for their wrongdoing, and now it's time to make up and for reconciliation to take place. The means by which this reconciliation would take place was Jesus. Now, I like to think that although the people of his time didn't recognise Jesus from that ancient scriptures, they at least recognised John. And this may be why crowds of people went out to him at the River Jordan. When they heard John's voice, they were convinced and they allowed him to baptise them as a sign of repentance, a, a turning away from the old ways and a turning to new. Well, the Jewish faith had its own rituals regarding washing with water as a method of purification. So when the Pharisees and Sadducees heard that John was washing people in the, in the Jordan, they obviously had to investigate. And John had a message especially for them. You brood of vipers. But if we get past the harsh language used by John to the religious leaders, his is still a message of repentance. So even these people who had been barking up the wrong tree for years and led others to do the same, 
was still part of God's message of love. He, he tells them that being the chosen race, the children of Abraham, isn't going to save them. And for me, this is where we as Gentiles come in. Most re refer to Peter baptising Gentiles in the house of Cornelius as the sign that God of the Jews uh, uh, could also be the God of the Gentiles. But here, John's words imply that if God, God can, as John put it, uh, raise up stones as children for Abraham, he can certainly raise up you and I. One of the problems for the Jews at that time is that they, they'd forgotten their place as God's chosen race. They weren't chosen because of any particular merit. They weren't powerful or wealthy like many of their neighbours. In fact, they were a nomadic desert tribe and, and basically the poor kids on the block. And that's, that's precisely why God chose them, to show that these desert wanderers with him as their God could become a powerful nation. <coughs> As God's chosen people, they were to demonstrate God's power and at the same time take his message to the world. God's plan was that every nation would become his people. Instead, the Jews seem to have created an inflated view of themselves and excluded the rest of the world from the blessing they received as God's people. And I'm not speaking about Jews of this day and age, I'm speaking of Jews back in that, those days, just in case people think of got something against them. My saviour was a Jew. In the same way we are chosen by God to demonstrate his power in our lives and to take his message to the world. Well here we have John, a, a ragged man of the desert cutting across the whole of the Jewish religious system. I'm baptising with water but someone's coming who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. He's basically saying if you think what I'm doing is radical, stick around. Uh, I spoke last week how diff about how difficult change is for many of us. But that's exactly what John is calling for. The old ways of the Jewish religion possibly couldn't possibly function by absorbing Jesus, the Messiah, into it. Jesus spoke about this in the parable of the um, new patch of old, uh, uh, new patch of cloth on an old garment and new wine in old wineskins. Jesus' message was that it isn't enough just to patch up the old religion of the Jews or add one or two new customs to it. Instead, he had come to usher in a, 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 an entirely new way to be God's people. And you know, God is looking for something new from us. Not the old style of religion based on legalism, but one based entirely on love. One of my favourite books when I was in theological college um, was grandly entitled Situational Ethics and it was written by a gentleman by the name of Joseph Fletcher. And while the other books on ethics had fixed rules or none at all, this author states that in any given situation one should ask oneself what would be the most loving thing to do and then go on and do it. And this was exactly the approach taken by Jesus. The religious leaders said that lepers were unclean. Jesus touched one to heal him. Prostitutes were classed as unclean. Yet Jesus let one wash his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair and anoint him with perfume. Tax collectors were considered beyond repentance. Yet Jesus had Matthew as his disciple and he ate in the house of Zacchaeus. John came to tell the people to prepare themselves because one was coming, chosen by God, who would break their mould and use them in a new and living way to be the people of God. Their choice, as ours, was to get on board or be left behind. We have the same choice, but one of the burdens that the church has faced throughout its life has been a, a clinging to the old ways, both because they're more comfortable and because we don't like change, do we? If everybody felt that way, we'd still be in the dark ages with no electricity, telephones, motorised transport, computers. But this goes on. Christianity in many places is extending itself away from services in the church uh, and on a Sunday. We have what's known as 
new expressions of faith, where the church is often taken where the people are, perhaps to a skateboarding park, if, if, if the minister is, or the person going there is uh, uh, able enough to, to, to skate, or with students meeting in a local cafe, or meeting in a retirement home. Just like the religious leaders of Jesus' time who'd held on to a particular way of doing things for so long that they were unable to see the new thing that God was doing, we must also be open to new ways of worship, new ways of receiving God and new ways of taking God to those who need him most. Amen. <clears throat> Let's confirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of the prophets that light and life would come into our world in the Messiah, in Jesus Christ. We pray that light and life will shine in our hearts and radiate from us into your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time of pandemic, we thank you for the vaccines available to protect us. We ask that these same vaccines be made available to those countries around the world who have not yet gained access to them. And we thank those scientists who have worked so hard with the tools you've given them. Though they may not recognise it, we thank you for inspiring their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our NHS and other caring organisations throughout the world have worked so hard and put their lives on the line for those who've been brought down by COVID. Strengthen the tired hands of care, especially at this difficult time of the year. Heal the minds of those caring who've seen so much death that despite their care, they've been powerless to prevent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you the discouraged and the fearful. Those in the grip of tyranny, the poor, people abused by those in power, those whose lives seem pointless and hopeless. You are the God of rescue. Come to the discouraged and the fearful and bring them encouragement and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the Lord and giver of eternal life and we give you thanks for all who have served you in the past and now rest in glory. We remember our loved ones who have died and we thank you for their lessons in life, love and faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And we share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Jesus, uh, Father, Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. In taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when his kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. And we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, those who have much faith and those who have little. It is Jesus himself who invites you. It is his will that those who seek him should find him here. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. We say together our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. For the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, those you love and those you pray for, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And until we meet again next Sunday, stay well and stay blessed. Oh.